you have up to 100 trillion microbial cells in and on your body. Some believe they even outnumber your uh, your human cells. Um, that number of microbes just in your gut is 10,000 times the population of our earth, right? I mean, it's, it's wow. incredible. And it's ever-changing based on how you live your life, your stress level, your travel, your changes in routine. And it really is the core of the balance of your whole body. So it's extremely impactful to our everyday lives. All right. So today we have Chelsea Brewster and we are going to be talking all about the microbiome and gut health. And that's why I really wanted to have you on Chelsea, because you're not only a scientist, but you are a scientist that specializes in digestive health, correct? Yes. So I am a scientist in research and development for Align Probiotic, um, which means I've been trained in chemical engineering. But I have this refined expertise in consumer-led innovation. So following those digestive health trends of real people's lives and then using that to create and design products that I can put out in the market that will help them. So let's start with, I know that the microbiome gut health is a very much like it's a it's like a big hashtag, right? It's super, super trendy right now. People are talking mm-hmm. about it all the time. So what I wanted to do, and I've had, I've done a lot of podcasts about this, to be honest, because it's such a popular topic and so many people are interested in it. But I really wanted to speak with you about getting, like, let's start from the basics, you know, like kind of like what is the gut microbiome and why is it so important? And then we can kind of move on from there. I love that. So the gut microbiome, I love starting from the beginning where when babies are born, they are a brand new environment for microbial colonization. And then they have about a thousand days or two and a half years to fully establish it. It's fascinating to me. So from birth, they're born brand new. And the first human that they typically touch is mom. And so mom starts that microbial colonization. And then from then on out, what that baby comes in contact with continues to develop that microbiome, the baby's family, the environment, the food the baby eats. And that is where it all starts. And then you establish your full microbiome, you know, about two and a half years old, but it's ever changing after that. So you could get up to you have up to 100 trillion microbial cells in and on your body. Some believe they even outnumber your uh, your human cells. Um, that number of microbes just in your gut is 10,000 times the population of our earth, right? I mean, it's, it's wow. incredible. And it's ever changing based on how you live your life, your stress level, your travel, your changes in routine. And it really is the core of the balance of your whole body. So it's extremely impactful to our everyday lives. So how do we know? So so basically you're saying that we can evolve, our microbiome can change over time, right? We can start off can. with a certain type um, mm. and then based on our different lifestyle choices, environment, uh, food, whatever, it, can, it changes. But it yes. starts when we're like basically a baby. Um, mm. how, how do we know? Like what are some typical signs or symptoms when our microbiome is off? Think of when your microbiome's off, you'll also feel off and you'll likely be able to notice it. So maybe occasionally feeling not yourself, um, some discomfort in your abdomen, gassy, bloaty, um, even uh, other parts that your microbiome, other systems your microbiome impacts like your immune system, your vaginal microbiome. Ever, your whole body has a microbiome, your skin, your teeth, your hair. It's, it's incredible. And so when it's off, I mean, you know, that feeling, you just don't feel yourself. Mm-hmm. What, what are the, what are sort of the things that like, what we, what are some of the lifestyle things that we do as just humans that th- can throw it off? Like what are the, mm-hmm. the, what are the top three things that change our microbiome? Mm-hmm. Top three things I would say, Diet, for sure, Um, stress, and 
The third one, I would say changes in your in your daily routine, which could be a lot of things I know. But if you think about when you change something big in your life or something really impactful happens, you tend your body. And even if it's not right away, it could be even a little bit later. You realize, oof, that was a lot. Uh, what do you because you said something about uh you were saying like for women or does women do, do what you do for a woman or a man, this different, the same, is there a different, I, I don't know. Is there different things that affect a woman's microbiome versus a man's or it doesn't matter. Is it, is it the same? Women's microbiome is unique. So we all need a healthy gut, right? We all need this to keep our body in balance, men and women both. The microbiome in your gut, of course, is responsible for your digestive system and keeping your digestion in balance. But it also impacts several other body systems, even your immune system. So it's extremely important. But women are not just limited to a gut microbiome. Women have a gut and a vaginal microbiome. And those impact our overall balance. So we are we are unique. And we do have unique needs for sure. So I didn't. So a, so women have a vaginal microbiome. What is that? Like how? Like what's what is? Give me that's something that we don't hear very often. So <laughs> kind of yeah. expand on that, please. <laughs> sure. Um, so a couple of things. So first of all, our guts and our vaginal microbiome have good and bad bacteria, and what we want to do is keep them in balance right? We're not trying to wipe a bunch of bacteria away or totally change them. We just want a nice, ha- healthy balance. And um, a really good analogy is like a seesaw. So if you think of our gut health on one, t- on one side and our whole body feminine health on the other side, if one's off, the other tends to be off. And so if I think about, let's say our gut health is off, Well, now we could occasionally be feeling that discomfort in our abdomen, gassiness, bloated, things like that. But then you'll notice some other things might be off in your body. You could be feeling that monthly swing and you could be headachy and just feel not yourself and off or feel like your emotional health is off. You could have a vaginal imbalance, like a bacterial or a yeast imbalance. And it's the same way the other way. If you're feeling those monthly swings and you feel imbalanced, sometimes your gut will follow and you'll feel those occasionally you'll feel those digestive upsets. So it's very interconnected. I, f- I feel like, is there certain, f- I feel like there are certain foods though that people say are really good for it uh, or foods that we, c- we people should stay away from. Can you talk about like just an overall, like general mm-hmm. uh, diet? Like what is, what are some top foods you can do to kind of have a healthy microbiome? What's, what are some mm-hmm. foods you should stay away from? So food is one piece. So first of all, food's one piece of a healthy microbiome, right? So mm-hmm. um, diet, of course, um, eat that high fiber diet. And make sure you're following your what your body needs. So it's that intuitive eating. You know, it's uh, listening to your body when you eat a food. And if it's not right for you, you're going to know. And then follow that moving forward. It's that staying active. And again, this isn't a, a rigid exercise regimen, but staying moving is really good for your motility and your body, right? And so keeping your microbiome healthy definitely relies on those two things. Relaxing is another piece of it. So even just five minutes a day of taking your taking your time. You know, I love to, um, you know, go out in nature. I live on a small farm. And so we love to go outside. And that just gives me that moment to let my mind and body recuperate. And then taking a taking a probiotic supplement as well. Now on the foods, it's a it's a big misconception that fermented foods are probiotics. Yeah, I was going to ask you about the fermented foods. Yeah, yeah, they are not the same thing as a probiotic. So, foods or drinks made by microbial growth or fermentation, they may have some probiotics in them, but a probiotic is a live bacteria, a live microorganism that has scientific data that shows a health benefit. So they may be a source of of these active microbes, but I'm just not sure. Um, They're not going to hurt. But, you know, as a scientist, I put my scientist hat on. I can't tell you how many are, how much is in there, how much you need to take to get a health benefit. And so when you see a probiotic supplement, there's a certain amount in there. They're called CFUs or colony forming units. 
And that's the amount that has scientific data that shows it helps with a certain health benefit. That's so interesting because I, well, the problem also is when something is very trending and popular, right? There's so much misinformation and that's becomes the problem, right? Because, and then, and then people don't know what's what, what to do, what not to do. Like everyone is like, oh yeah, I'll just take a probiotic and I'll just do this. But not every probiotic, it, it isn't the probiotic dependent on the, on the actual individual and the, and, and then like, well, let's, okay, for, for, let's first answer that. And then I'll ask you my second part of my question. Yeah, it's a great question. So, so what probiotics right for you? I mean, that's the big question. You go to the shelf and you're looking around and you're thinking, oh my goodness, there's so many options. I have no idea where to start. So picking the right probiotic for you is really important because they are strain specific. And so first of all, you're going to see this this name of a probiotic probably on the side of your pack. And it's often written in Latin. It has a genus. It has a species, sometimes a subspecies. Yeah. But the most important part is that last little part, and it's the strain. Sometimes it's a number. Sometimes it's a letter-number combination. That is that indicator that you'll find that's been studied where we know the certain amount you need. So at Align, we are very strategic and we're very picky on which probiotic strains we put in our products because we want the guaranteed health benefit behind it. But like, I I mean, I was always told, again, this could be misinformation, but uh, a probiotic needs to be refrigerated. And if you have a certain, so I want you to to touch on that. Um, And then the other one is like, if you're saying you're using a particular strain, but what if I don't need that particular strain and I need another strain? How do how does anyone even know what strain they need or not no, need, right? right? So refrigerated. First of all, do probiotics even need to be refrigerated? So what's important is that the probiotics are alive when you take them. But there are multiple ways to keep them alive. So some might need refrigerated, but some are actually Uh, freeze-dried. And so they're going to stay almost, let's think of it as like hibernated or asleep until you take it and they get into your gut and then they wake up and they're ready to help you. So Align Probiotics, we actually keep ours almost dormant in a capsule and protected until they get into your body. Um, The other question you asked was, how do I know it's right for me? How do I even know it's working? This is a huge question. Okay. So, you know, I like to think of it as going to when you first start going to the gym or you start a new exercise, you're not going to notice a big change after one or two days of doing those push ups or doing those sit ups. It takes about a month of daily use of a probiotic to really see if you're going to get the health benefits from that product for, that are right for you. And so I would think of it more as, you know, let me get this this new probiotic. Let me give it a try, but I'm going to take it for about a month every day, and then I'll try to gauge if this one was right for me or not. So you said, okay, so you said you, you said a line. So you created the probiotic. So how did you even you created the women's version of a probiotic for a line, right? How did that even yeah. like happen? Number one, how did you know? Like, what? Like, can you? I'm just very curious about the evolution of like how that even like occurs. Were you having major gut issues yourself, and then you kind of were like, you know, going to see tons of doctors? Like, what was your like? What was your origin story to even be even creating a women's version of a probiotic? Yeah, the creation of Align Women's Dual Action Probiotics started with talking to many, many real women. So it wasn't just my experience where, you know, when I'm feeling really stressed or feeling my monthly swings and I'm headachy and my gut is off, I talk to women who are all over the country in all different environments, urban, suburban, living different careers. And I talked with them to understand what they're experiencing and what a daily probiotic supplement could be. Mm -hmm. And so many women actually had these aha moments that I've had 
in these these discussions where they started connecting those dots wow when one thing is off i do have other things swinging off i am out of balance and so that became uh you know an opportunity where i, I was just determined like women deserve the best all right we do a lot our bodies yes. go through a lot <laughs> so i gathered together a team of women scientists who i love dearly and, and who are experts in so many different things so women's health, probiotics, studying that scientific data, formulating it into a capsule. And we all worked together to pull this off as a, a product that we just didn't see on the market. And we wanted to design the right thing for women. And so it contains a lot of things. Um, it's not just probiotics for gut health which of course will help you manage those occasional digestive upsets, uh, like the bloating, the gassiness, that discomfort in your abdomen, but it's also going to help you keep in balance that feminine health. So your mood health, your monthly mood balance, and also your vaginal health. And so keeping that in balance as well. So men, so this is not a men's product that you designed. <laughs> no, it's a women's product. And I will say the couple of men who are on the team, of course, are the biggest supporters of it and also pulling from from their life experience. They're the women in their lives that are dear to their hearts. And so we truly wanted to represent uh, the uniqueness and empower women with their bodies and everything that's happening to our bodies in this daily, in this daily capsule. And it's really easy. It's just a capsule a day. Okay. So can you, I wanted to ask you about what a prebiotic is, because mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of confusion between what a prebiotic is versus a probiotic. Mm -hmm. And then I want to ask you about some other myths about okay. uh, probiotics. So a prebiotic is very simply the food for the good bacteria or the probiotic. And so this could either be the fiber you're eating every day, mm. or if you're not eating a high fiber diet, you could take a prebiotic. And mm -hmm. this is actually a fiber that feeds that good bacteria and has been proven to also have a health benefit. Could you have a, a ha, okay, so, okay. And then what are some myths of the probiotic? And then we'll go into my next question. Okay. We know the refrigeration thing, you're saying that's a myth. Yeah. It's about being alive when you take it, correct? Mm -hmm. That's a it big is. one. Because you it see is. now in, when you go into stores, like they have a whole section now of like refrigerated probiotics and people are mm -hmm. just like, and, and they're very expensive. You're right, they are. And we really, I personally, I'm not around my refrigerator that often. So I have two kids, I'm running around. I need to be able to throw something in my purse. And so I really was hoping, and we did achieve this, we got it in a bottle. And so just throw it in your bag and it's safe in that bottle. The bottle even has um, desiccated walls to make sure that you can't get moisture in there and ruin the good probiotic strains that you've invested in. And so it's protected in that bottle. And the probiotics in it are um, you know, guaranteed to give you mm. the amount that you need. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Okay. Um, okay. So, so, so give me some other myths that sure. people, because when um, people listen to this podcast or, you know, wander around or listen to other people's podcasts, they're going to hear, you know, do this, and then they're going to listen to something else. And they'll say, no, this is what you should do. So, so have you been to the shelf and seen the, you know, a hundred billion CFUs, or those are the colony forming units, which tells you how much is in there or, you know, 30 strains of probiotic. Mm. The more probiotic strains are not necessarily better. So it's a big misconception. And the way we can think about it is, let's say there's a house fire. You're not right. going to call a plumber, a doctor, you know, three different fire departments and a pilot. You call the one fire department that's going to get the job done of putting that fire out. So this long list of probiotic strains does not always mean better. It's the specific strain that you need for the health benefit that you might see listed. That's the important part. So um, that's good go to ahead. know. So, so I was going to mm -hmm. ask you, does it mean, is more, is more better or is, you know, is it, 
Like how many pro- probiotics do I need, right? Like if I see there's a, a gazillion on a bottle, that doesn't really mean anything either. Not necessarily. And again, you're going to want to look for that strain. And so that Latin name where you see that probiotic strain, that's what is studied. And so if you don't see a strain at the end of it, ours is Bifidobacterium 35624. Mm -hmm. That's the gut health probiotic. And then the two feminine health probiotics, you'll see Lactobacillus acidophilus LA14 or HN001, those are the strains, and those are what have been studied. And then the amount in there is what's going to help give you that support that you need every day. You know, another reason why I wanted to have you on here was because of all the R&D, the research that you guys do, you know? So Mm -hmm. it's not like just some random person who comes on with their opinion, you know? And so that's like, so that's, that's why Matt, I want to be very specific with this stuff because it's the stuff I'm very curious about as well. I'm very confused. I find Mm -hmm. sometimes when you're, when you're, um, when you're, the more exposed you are to more information and more experts and more people, it becomes even more comp. I'm like, I don't even know. So uh, that's I'm, the first part. I'm a, I'm a huge skeptic when I shop, Jennifer. I myself, coming into the Align Probiotic brand, was a huge skeptic because I don't know what to trust. And it was so confusing to me. And so I think it's such a unique opportunity on the brand because I got to have an entrepreneurial spirit. I got to go out and sense what women do really want and then have the support of the whole team to say, hey, this is what I'm going to stand for. This we can't, we can't cut corners on this, all right? Like these are needs and it's not being met for women. And so that was that, you know, unique opportunity to understand how overwhelming it is to walk up to that shelf and then hopefully give a clear opportunity because women can experience that good gut feeling and not feeling so off and not themselves. Well, how about, are there, is there, a, so I'm, I'm going to get back to the, some of the initial questions. I feel, I just want yeah. to get clarity on number one, should I be taking a test first? Is there like a blood test, some type of test to take where I even know that I'm deficient in a certain strain versus just randomly taking something regardless? Cause to your point, you're saying that not one, one size does not fit all for everybody. Or are you saying that, okay, well, yeah. So I, you know, I can't speak for, you know, for everything in the market, but I myself trust <laughs> that if you try a probiotic for a month, you're going to know if it worked or not for you, right? So if you take you it will every, know. you're going to know, you're going to feel if it's right for you or if it's not. So I have not found a test that is going to tell me what strains of probiotics to take. Now, this microbiome world is new, right? It's really only 20 20 years old, couple decades. And so we are really still learning the impact and how big of a deal it is that we have this, you know, this universe of a microbiome on and in us and how it's connected to one another and all the systems in our body which is why I really believe, go ahead and give it a try and take it for a month and be compliant. <laughs> and then you'll be able to tell really quickly. And it, and it might not be the right one for you, but give yourself you know, the credit to really dig in and see what's right. I mean, it's just like when you, when you try a new food or you try a new exercise, you get that feeling of like, hmm, yeah, I think this is it. This is giving me what I was looking for. Okay, that's good to know. Thank you. Um, sure. let's move off of probiotics for a minute and go on into okay. more depth about overall gut health, right? Cause they say okay. that your gut is your second brain, right? Um, I'd like to kind of talk about other ways that we may not even know that our gut may be the issue in the first place. Mm-hmm. Right. And what does it mean when they say it's a second brain? So, The gut microbiome, it's fascinating. So I mentioned to you, it's made up those 100 trillion dollars, 100 trillion cells. What are those, right? They're bacteria, they're viruses, they're yeasts. And I feel like historically we've thought, oh God, that's disgusting. Bacteria, right? Viruses. And they're entirely underrated. They work hand in hand to support the systems in your entire body, 
right? And we each have our own unique microbiome, okay? And so given all of that, these little microbes that you can only see under a microscope all are doing their jobs. And, and in the end, what, that's what's making us feel you know, how, you know, whether we're, whether we're ourselves or we're off. And so I think it's just extremely important to remember a lot of this is rooted in our gut microbiome. And so that's what's keeping several of your other body systems working. Your digestive system, of course, but even your immune system and your vaginal balance. Okay. How about anything? Is there a gut brain connection? Like, is there any kind of symptoms? Like, give me some symptoms. Sometimes mm-hmm. people, I, I want to like give people information that maybe they're not even sure why they're quote unquote off, right? So, name mm-hmm. some symptoms that could be not so obvious. I mean, forget about obviously the bloating and this and that. Are there other types of symptoms beyond your gut that can be that? could be problematic that you would never even connect your gut to? Yeah, everybody's so different. You know, it's really hard to give general symptoms that everyone would be feeling. I think that's why it's such an intuitive journey. So the first thing I would recommend is just getting in touch with what's going on with your body. You could even track it down, write it down. But until you understand the cycle that your body's going through, it's going to be hard to say just a symptom because symptoms pop up and crop in occasionally in and out. And it's just hard to really track what that could be. So if I think of the microbiome, you're really thinking of those, you know, those occasional gut symptoms. I mean, it really is feeling, feeling that digestive upset. That's what it's rooted in for your gut for your gut microbiome. And then you will notice, or I notice, and many women I've talked to notice, that when one thing is off, other things start to domino effect off, and then everything is off kilter. And so our body is so interconnected, especially as women. And that's where it's more, if you can track and notice, wow, when this one thing happens to me, this other thing always follows. What is that? And then you'll start to get to the root of it And you can try a probiotic, that might work. You could also try those other things, that well-balanced diet, relaxing, giving yourself that five minutes, and then making sure that you're staying active and see if any one of those things or all four work together to really help you get in sync. Well, well well-balanced diet is kind of you know, it, 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 that doesn't really, everyone has a, a very specific diet now, right? You have the ge- the keto diet, you have the mm-hmm. paleo diet, you have mm-hmm. vegan diet. Is there a particular diet that works the best in gut health that you've noticed? So what I've noticed is this is repetitive, listening to your body. So I myself, I'm a vegetarian. So when I found the right protein, so, like, meat substitutes. So my protein every day that I'm eating, it took me a journey to figure out which one was right for me. So certain foods just didn't work for me. And I didn't feel energized when I was eating them and others did. So again, it's a unique journey and you're really going to have to trial and error. But again, I would recommend don't trial for a day and then make a quick decision. Give yourself some time and trial it and see if it's really what's the root of making you feel more like yourself. Or if you're still feeling off, it might be time to move on and try something else. Um, I do uh, focus myself on high fiber. That's what works for me to make sure I maintain my energy and feeling lighter and more active. Uh, But everyone's going to be so unique. Right. Uh, the other kind of foods I didn't ask earlier was like the yogurt, the kef- kefir or kefir. I don't know what people say, yeah. but is that a myth too, or does that actually benefit people? So kefir is very similar kefir. to <laughs> kefir. It's very similar to the other probiotic foods that are, are called probiotic foods, but they're fermented. And so in general... Um, you know, kefir might have some some good bacteria in it. It's not going to harm you. Uh, go ahead and give it a shot. I just, as a scientist, I could not recommend 
eating kefir regularly and feeling guaranteed that you would feel a health benefit, right? Because Mm -hmm. like I mentioned, it's not, it's not tracked. Like I don't know how much good bacteria is in it. I don't know which probiotic strain it is. So then I wouldn't be able to go look and see if there's scientific data that shows it'll help you ongoing. Hmm. Okay. So let's get back to you for a second. I'm curious. So you, I understand what you, why, what you, why you did like went to the women's, um, I guess, angle of this whole thing, right? Cause it was, there was a need and a void and you wanted to be very specific. I get that. Um, like, is there a lot of people who do, I don't know, is, what's it called? Digestive wellness health. Is that like a, is that like a very specific, like how, how, how unique is what you do, I guess? Is there a lot of people who focus on women's health like that? Or is it mostly, mostly people do much more mass general Yeah, I don't think it's I don't think it's common. Um, so I myself, ever since I was I've never little, heard of it. <laughs> yeah, I myself, ever since I was little, I knew I wanted to be a scientist. I was always interested in learning how things work, um, you know, how the body works. When I, I'll never forget in <clears throat> I was in fifth grade when you do the science fair, right? And everyone picks their topic and. I thought it was such a unique thing that somebody was asking me to design an experiment. I was so curious. And so it's no surprise that I continued on and I went into chemical engineering. I actually started chemical engineering as pre-med because I thought I would be a doctor. And I learned in chemical engineering and after doing some work at Uh, Procter & Gamble, I learned how I could create products in the health industry still that will help people on their wellness journey. And I felt really pulled towards that side of health and wellness and more supporting people on their health journeys as they're coming up against different things and different symptoms Mm -hmm. are popping up. And so that, that became my passion area. And then when I realized I could reach out and just talk to consumers anytime I wanted, however often I wanted to and use them as my inspiration to design these products. I mean, what a privilege. It was just just such a unique, a unique consumer led type of R and D that I had never experienced before. You actually, I was going to say something. You talked about moving and exercise. Is there like, what's the science behind that? Is it because it's when you move and like to me, you're talking to someone who's very much into that world. So Um, is it because you're getting things, you're moving things around? Is that what it is? Like you're keeping things, you know, moving. So that's why activity is very, very, very important. Um, It is. And hydration. So hydration and activity, you're going to want to keep moving. You're going to want to stay hydrated. Your digestive system, it, it needs that. It needs the movement. I mean, the way humans originated, we should be moving. We're no longer hunting our food and gathering our food any longer. So, right. That's where even just, you know, I'm not a huge rigid exercise person. Personally, that's not one of my habits. My habit is constantly moving. I really never stop moving. Um, I mean, you know, as a mom too, we kind of yes. can't. We don't really get that option. But <laughs> my my hobbies nope. are, yeah, mm-hmm. my hobbies are, oh, you know, my daughter wants to try out basketball. Cool. I guess that's my new hobby. Let me learn all about it. Let's go play every day. My son's playing ice hockey. All right, let's get shooting in the basement every day. And so it's like adapting just to the world around me. But I don't want to sit still because if I'm sedentary all day, I feel awful and I don't feel myself. Absolutely. No. Oh, I think that's absolutely true. So Mm -hmm. just to kind of round this all up, let me just get this straight. So um, myth one is it doesn't need to be refrigerated for a probiotic. Mm-hmm. It also, ma- it matters a strain. Does not matter how many? So the numbers don't make a difference. Mm-hmm. Um, movement is really important for gut health, eating tons of fiber, like fruits and vegetables. And, you know, and you're up, you're a plant-based person or a vegetarian. I think that's for, from all my research, that's basically in line align with what I what, <laughs> get it uh, with uh, with everything I've heard 
Um, <laughs> Is there anything, uh, you should stay with whatever you're trying for a month to make sure that Mm -hmm. something is working, whatever it is, doesn't matter if it's a probiotic. There's our foods, yogurts, kefir, sauerkraut that have been touted as beneficial, but you're not going to, as you're not going to put your, your Mm -hmm. name on that because you don't know it's, it's very person specific. Did I catch, am I, am I missing anything? I don't think so. And I just think, uh, try try and think of, you're allowed to be picky when you're shopping for products, right? Like there's, it's okay to question and be a skeptic. Um, you know, Align mm-hmm. has this healthy gut team up we started because as I was talking to real men and women across, you know, the whole country, I started to hear I can't figure this out on my own. I need help. And so we brought together real people using Align and real medical professionals, and they are guiding all of us as we try to pick which one's right for us. Like you said, how do I know? Well, first of all, what even is a probiotic? So let's start there. And then which one's right for me? And then it really comes down to, like I mentioned, trying it out and then experiencing it. Did you feel a good, healthy gut? Did you feel that soothing relief? Um, Did you feel more like yourself? Did you feel uh, your emotional health was balanced? Did you feel less, you know, swinging on a monthly basis? And that's where tracking that and just trying to stay really in tune to how you're feeling day to day and month to month is going to help you realize something's worth it or not to take every day. We do have on a line, we are number one gastroenterologist, number one doctor, number one gynecologist, recommended probiotic supplements. You can also talk to your healthcare provider and discuss with them if if they think it's right to try it out. That's the other reason why I wanted to talk to you because you are like Mm -hmm. number one. And I I think I've been taking it. Um, I liked it. I like it. I like the convenience of it because like you said, people are moving around. You can't be in your fridge. It's like, it's not convenient. It's much easier. You've got to be adaptable and you have to, you have to like integrate things into your life. That's simple and make your life easier, not more difficult. Right. So exactly. And we were really, and like I mentioned, when you're shopping, you can be picky. We were really picky about choosing the ingredients in it. So I mentioned the gut health probiotic. It's bifidobacterium 35624. So you would see that on the side of the pack. And it has scientific data that shows it helps to manage and relieve those occasional digestive upsets that you might be feeling. And then we chose the two probiotics. We were very picky uh, for the vaginal balance. And so those are the lactobacillus LA14 and HN001. And then something really unique about this product is I added a plant-based botanical. It's called Chase Tree Berry. And this is, again, it's a, it's a plant-based ingredient that's been used, uh, you know, for, sh- for centuries by women to help with that monthly mood swing. And to me, it was really important to invest in this material and get it in there because I strongly believe that it's going to help women feel more like themselves. And so that's that whole, when you, when you look, when you look down those supplement facts and you kind of always turn that pack to the side and you look at it, you're kind of looking at, oh, okay, it's gluten-free, it's soy-free, it's vegetarian, it's dairy-free. I love that. No refrigeration is required. I love that. But then you're allowed to look at that list of ingredients and be like, hmm, you know, what are these? Can I trust them? And that's where talking with your doctor or looking at the at the recommendations if a if a supplement has them or not, you know, that's that's a lot of clout. You have to trust and use your gut to make sure that you think that's the right one for you. Right. So be Absolutely. a skeptic. Yes. I am. Uh, well, thank, thanks, Chelsea. I think this is good. I, I think that we covered everything. And uh, thank you again for being on the podcast. And hopefully we've given people, you know, the basics of microbiome, gut health, where they've learned a little bit. Um, breaking it down in a very simplified way, I think, is important. Sometimes it can be too um, complicated, which is unnecessary. I agree. Um, I agree. And you really, if you listen to your body, you're gonna, you're gonna sense it, right? I think we're, we are each our own expert in our own body. 
And then we have to trust our gut and listen to those signs our body is giving us that something's not right or that something's starting to feel a little more like ourselves. So we don't give ourselves enough credit. Oh, exactly. Well, thank you. I appreciate (laughs) you coming on. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Thank you for watching Habits and Hustle. Please watch another video here and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already by pressing the button below. Hosted by Jennifer Cohen, visionaries tune in, you can get to know them. Be inspired, this is your moment. Excuses, we ain't having that. The Habits and Hustle podcast powered by Habit Nest.